Hello, my name is Adrian and I'm an amateur astrophotographer living near London in the UK. I'm very lucky to have just become a new owner of an Avalon M Uno equatorial mount. And in this video I'd like to show you what came in the box with the mount and how to set it up with the Avalon tripod. I'll look at cabling up the mount and the telescope and setting up the Stargo software to control the mount in another video. So this one is just about the hardware. So two boxes arrived, one for the tripod and one for the mount and his accessories. Now I've already unpacked the tripod which actually comes in its own black soft carry bag. So let's start with opening up the tripod. So here it is, lovely black soft carry case. And here is the Avalon T-Pod 110 tripod. Now Avalon sells three tripods, the T-Pod 90, the 110 and the T-Pod 130. So here they are in the picture. The numbers refer to the maximum height that they can go to in centimetres. So the smallest tripod raises the mount to 90 centimetres from the ground, while the T-Pod 130 is the tallest, rising to 130 centimetres. The T-Pod 90 was originally designed for the portable Avalon M0 mount and is also compatible with the Avalon linear mount. The T-Pod 110 and the 130, now they are both suitable for the M Uno mount, which is what I have. So for me, it was a choice between these two tripods. I chose the T-Pod 110 for astrophotography because I don't need the height for looking through an eyepiece and the lower I can keep the mount to the ground, the more stable it will be, especially in a light breeze like we have today. Also, as you can see in the technical specs, the T-Pod 110 is slightly lighter than the 130 and it collapses down smaller to 71.5 centimetres versus 99 centimetres for the 130. Now, out of interest, while the T-Pod 110 and 130 tripods were originally designed for Avalon mounts, Avalon sell a range of adapters to make them compatible with a selection of other mounts, such as the Skywatcher EQ6, Celestron C-Gem, Losman D G11, Takahashi EM200 and EM10, Vixen and a range of other mounts. Now as you can see the T-Pod tripods are beautifully made of anodized aluminium and stainless steel fittings. So this means they are lightweight yet strong and durable for a long life. Now down the legs there are several openings, two inch and one and a quarter inch holes which make it convenient for holding eyepieces or other pieces of equipment. Now you can buy the tripod either in red or black but this is Avalon and a bit like Ferrari for my choice it has to be red. There's a carry handle on the side which makes it good and easy for uh, carrying, for transporting and feet which pivot uh, on the bottom there which makes it good for stabilizing it on the ground and to set it up just make sure the leg clamps are undone spread it apart like that push down on the center spreader until it locks into place and to extend it to the full height we just undo the leg clamps a bit noisy and very bit squeaky You can see, so there we are, set up to the full height. Now the mount ships in this very strong box with lots of foam to protect it and with compartments in the foam for all the bits and pieces. Now I'm going to pause the video here so I can unpack the contents of the box onto the table and go through it with you. So these are the parts from the upper area of the shipping box. And starting over here, we have a, a 12 volt DC adapter. It will run from anything between 110 volts AC and 240 volts AC. And we also have a car cigarette lighter 12 volt adapter. And here we have the counterweight with support shaft and it comes with a, a neat clamp to fasten this to the mount. Now you might think that this doesn't look like a proper counterweight and bar, and you'd be right, it's only half a kilogram in weight. 
And this is because of the design of the M Uno mount. It only requires small counterweights and for some setups you might not need a counterweight at all, which is a big advantage and it might save your toes or fingers from handling big heavy counterweights as you need with the German equatorial mount. Now the clamp system that's used on the counterweight here is also used on the carry handle system uh, which can be used to attach to the mount for easy transport and as you can see here can easily be removed as well. I'll show you how this attaches later. There's also the Stargo control keypad and there's an Ethernet style uh, cable connection used to control the mount and it comes with a, a standard USB cable too. And lastly here, a nice little touch is a metric hexagonal key set. Now let's look at what we find in the bottom part of the box. And first we have the beautiful M Uno mount. And as you can see, it looks completely different from a standard German equatorial mount. Now I'm just going to fit the carry handle onto the bracket here. This makes it easier for transporting and maneuvering. And as you can see, there is a, a single arm which comes down to the R axis here. At the end of the arm is the deck axis, which is already pre-fitted with a 75 millimeter Losmondi style dovetail clamp. And if I rotate the mount over like this, then you can see underneath the arm, we have the Avalon Stargo control system, which is where we plug the power and the control cables. We also have a circular tripod plate um, and a selection of nuts and bolts that are used for fitting the plate and the mount together. So also included is a polar finder and LED illuminator kit. I probably won't use this as the polar finder is fitted in the middle of the RA axis. Put it in just up there like that. So you can see if a telescope is fitted, then it will block the view for the polar finder. Now you can buy a mounting bracket for the polar finder to mount on the side of the arm here. But to be honest, I prefer to use my guide scope together with software such as SharpCap for my polar alignment and I'll stick with that method. An advantage of leaving the polar finder out is that it leaves this empty channel up through the middle of the RA axis which is useful for passing cables through and saves them from twisting as the mount moves. Now lastly you get a wallet containing some information, some documentation and a warranty certificate and there's a USB pen drive which has software and the manuals loaded on it as PDFs which is a great way to save paper. Now because one of my telescopes is a large refractor with 900 millimeters of focal length I've also ordered these two additional items. I have a 105 mm extender kit and an extra counterweight shaft with 1.4 kilogram of counterweight. Now the mini extender raises the telescope clamp on the deck axis here far enough so the long refractor will clear the RA axis motor housing as you can see in the picture here. This means unfortunately I won't have a full 360 degrees of free rotation around the RA axis with my large scope, but it is still better than a German equatorial mount. I also have a small GP clamp here, which allows for a guide scope or secondary imaging scope to mount it at the bottom of the deck axis here. Now Avalon call this their dual deck system and as you can see the bottom end of the deck axis rotates with the top. I think this is a really neat feature. It also helps to balance the RA axis as it adds extra weight opposite to the main scope which would be here. This is especially useful if I'm using the mini extender with my large telescope. Now the early versions of the M Uno mount didn't have the dual deck system. The guys at Avalon recommended the mini extender and the extra counterweight 
based on the specifications of the telescopes I want to use, so it's always worth contacting them and asking what they suggest you need. OK, so let's start to put things together. So first I'm going to mount the adapter plate here onto the top of the tripod. Now you can see that the adapter plate comes with a brass colour block already fitted here. And this will be used with the azimuth adjusting screws to set the polar alignment. So this block is your nominal north facing position. And I'm going to nominate the leg with the teapod logo and the carry handle here as my north facing leg on the tripod. Now the mounting plate and the top of the tripod are already milled for a variety of mountings and fixings. To mount the M Uno plate we're going to use three M8 screws and they're going to go into the countersunk holes by each leg here, here and here. I'll just get those lined up. Got my handy little electrical screwdriver. So there's the plate fitted and to fit the mount onto the plate we're going to use three M8 knobs and they go in just by the mounting screws here, here and here. And that's it done. Okay, so next on to the mount. So here it is again, the M Uno mount. So this mount looks and feels amazing. It weighs just 14.9 kilograms and has a carrying load capacity of 20 kilograms for imaging and 25 kilograms for observing. As I already said, it really doesn't look like a German equatorial mount. And with a short telescope that will fit in this space here, then you can avoid a meridian flip and potentially the use of any counterweights. The quality of the engineering is fantastic. It's CNC machined from solid aluminium, which is then anodized in this beautiful red. And the motors drive toothed belts instead of cogs. So this means there is zero backlash on the motors and zero maintenance, so no lubricating or greasing of the cogs. The drive belts themselves are made from a special material with embedded strands of steel. So they are much higher quality than say automotive belts, such as those used as cam belts, so will last a lifetime. Roller bearings are used throughout, so there's no cheap bronze bush type bearings here. So basically the level of engineering and attention to detail is phenomenal, and it really is great value for money too. I should be easily able to achieve 20 to 30 minute subs with this mount when guiding. The control system is Avalon's own Stargo system. Now this comes in two flavours, either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for wireless communication. You can see that you can also control it via USB, which is probably what I'll do most of the time. And if you want to use an Apple mobile device such as an iPhone or iPad, then go for the Wi-Fi version, which is what I have here. If you use Android devices, then I believe Bluetooth is better. Anyway, I will look more at that later when setting up the Stargo software. Now there is also a ST4 connection here and two AUX connections. Again, I will look at these in the next video. So the mount has two areas which need checking or setting mechanically before I can attach it to the tripod. I need to set the latitude range for polar alignment, which is done under here, and there is a, a course setting for setting the balance of the arm as it rotates around the RA axis, and that is done using these screws here. So let's look at how I make these adjustments next. First, let's look at the adjustments for polar alignment. So here are the adjustments for azimuth, and these two knobs screw against the brass pillar which is already fitted to the mounting plate. 
By the way, there is also a handy spirit level here which you can use to level up the tripod. Now for the altitude adjustments. And there are two knobs here which screw against another brass pillar which is hidden up under the RA housing axis here. So let me try and turn the mount so you can see that. So the M Uno is designed to operate in latitudes from about 15 degrees to 70 degrees. The brass pillar can be fixed in one of three positions, producing three ranges within which the mount can be adjusted. You might just be able to make out the mounting holes here. These images from the user guide show the brass pillar better. In the manual you can see in the left hand image it shows you can remove the side panel to access the area better. But I found I didn't have to do that. It's a bit fiddly but with a hex key you can reach to slacken the screws and remove and fit the pillar in the new position. So the altitude adjustment is split into three ranges. Position 1 between 15 and 40 degrees position 2 between 32 and 55 degrees and position 3 between 45 and 70 degrees. So the idea here is to pick the range where your latitude falls closest to the middle of the range. As I live near London my latitude is 51 degrees north. So either position 2 or 3 would work. However position 2 means there is only 4 degrees of movement before the end stop while position 3 means there is 6 degrees of movement to the end stop, i.e. the adjustment knobs will be more evenly adjusted if I choose position 3. So looking at my setup again, you can see I have set up for position 3. Next, let's look at setting the course balance control for the RA axis. OK, so when balancing the mount, we have to make sure that both the deck axis and the RA axis are balanced. For the deck axis, it's a matter of sliding a scope backwards and forwards along the dovetail clamp here until it is balanced and there's no natural tendency for it to turn on its own. For the RA axis, we're also looking for a balance so there's no natural movement around the centre of the RA axis here. You can see that a main scope would normally sit along the axis or just above the axis and to balance against the scope we need to add weight on the opposite side down here. Now the M Uno arm as you can see is already set at a distance from the RA axis and this naturally provides some counterweight itself. And the further the arm is moved away from the RA axis the more turning force or moment it will exert. So what Avalon have done is allow you to adjust the distance that the arm takes up from the RA axis and this is done by these four screws here. So let me remove this grey cover and we can see how it's done. So now I've unscrewed this grey aluminium bracket which holds the main body of the arm in position. And of course there is another bracket on the other side fixing the arm in position. So now you can see that there are three mounting positions on the side and they are labelled 1, 2 and 3 in the manual. And these are the primary course control positions. There are two mounting positions along the arm here and they are called A and B in the manual. Position B allows the arm to move to its furthest position and is only used for large telescopes. So a combination of all these positions gives six different offsets of the main arm. Here I have a diagram and table showing the different offsets achieved at the different arm positions. You can see that using position A with 1, 2 and 3 you get a range from 36.5mm down to 14.5mm. Position A2 which is 25.5 millimetres is the factory default and is suitable for many of the portable mirror type scopes available on the market as you can see in the picture here. Setting this course adjustment for the RA balance is going to be a bit of trial and error as it will depend on the weight of the equipment you have mounted and the distance each piece is from the RA axis. 
Now note that if you don't need to use position B here on the arm and you just intend to use position A and make adjustments on one, two or three on the vertical plane here, then you just need to release these two screws on the aluminium bracket on both sides of the arm to allow the arm to move up and down. You don't need to release these two screws. Now with my 120mm refractor with the extender kit fitted, I will try the arm in its farthest position of B1. I'm also going to try mounting the guide scope on the bottom of the deck axis here in dual deck mode as that will also act as a counterweight. Next, looking at the counterweight positions, the counterweight can be mounted in several different locations. This of course is different to the German EQ mount. With the Avalon M Uno, you can mount the counterweights forwards here near the deck motor, or if I unscrew this block here, then I can fit it further back behind this Stargo control panel. Or I can fit the counterweight on top of the RA axis where the carry handle also mounts. If you have a very light weight scope, then you may find you need more weight on top here to balance against the arm. This came as a bit of a surprise to me, but of course it makes sense when you consider how the mount is designed with this single arm and the typical type of scope that will be fitted. Now I think only this standard counterweight is going to fit back here in this space here. Um, with the longer counterweight shaft and heavier counterweight that I have, then this is going to have to sit forwards in this position here. So here are some images showing different setups with the M Uno mount. Note the position of the scope and the counterweight in each example and also where an extender is used to offset the scope from the mount arm. Avalon sell a range of extenders and spacers of different lengths, as you can see in the picture here. In some cases, an extender or spacer is required because of the size of the scope, as it is in this example here, and in other cases, the offset may be needed to balance the RA axis because the scope is very small and lightweight. OK, now we have the mount configured for my latitude and for the course RA balancing. Let's get it on the tripod and see how the fine balancing goes. OK, so I've fitted the mount onto the tripod and I've also fitted the 105mm extender to the deck axis. So all that was required was to remove the Losman D style dovetail clamp with two bolts and then fit the extender with the two M8 screws that were provided and remount the dovetail clamp on top of the extender. I've also fitted the small GP clamp on the bottom of the deck axis with the two screws provided and I've attached the small half kilogram counterweight on the long counterweight shaft here. I found I didn't need the 1.4 kilogram counterweight with my setup. So all that remains now is to fit the main scope and my guide scope onto the mount. So here is my lovely Takahashi TSA 120mm refractor and I'm using a Celestron 9x50 finder scope for my guide scope down there. If I release the deck axis clutch and let the scope sit horizontally, you can see there's no natural movement on it. It's very well balanced. If we do the same check on the RA axis, release the RA axis clutch, again let go and you can see it's very well balanced. Moves very smoothly too on the roller bearings in the M Uno mount. We'll just add a note here that I'm using the A1 offset position on the arm here. I tried the B1 position which I talked about earlier but that gave too much offset uh, for the arm against the scope and so the A1 with the half kilogram counterweight is fine for this setup. Another note is that as the Avalon M Uno mount has no backlash, it doesn't use cogs or a worm drive, you don't have to set the balance of the scope with a, a bias in the easterly direction as you might have to with some German EQ mounts. 
the Emuno tooth belt technology means that there's no need for this. You just set the mount in a, a neutral balanced fashion. And this also makes the mount more stable for long exposures and is very useful for remote operation. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to look at setting up the Stargo software and controlling the mount. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you find it useful. Bye for now. Thank you.